Picture a morning where the rules of the semiconductor world have silently rewritten themselves. What once seemed unquestionable suddenly feels uncertain. For years, the industry operated under a firm belief, without the specialized machines controlled by the United States, Europe, and Japan, no country could ever reach the highest levels of chip manufacturing. China was widely assumed to remain permanently behind. The most critical assets, cutting-edge lithography systems, precision etching tools, rare chemicals, and ultra-pure gases, were all locked within Western supply chains. Remove access to those, and progress would simply stop. That assumption offered reassurance. Today, it no longer does. Subtle signals began surfacing long before anyone took them seriously. Quiet talk suggested that SMIC, China's flagship chipmaker, was moving faster than expected. Most observers brushed it off, assuming it was nothing more than minor optimization or clever engineering within existing limits. Then the narrative shifted. Reports emerged claiming SMIC had reached an advanced nanometer class manufacturing process without relying on any American or European equipment. No EUV systems from ASML, no tools from applied materials or LAM research, no Western hardware whatsoever. According to everything the industry believed, such a feat should not have been achievable. Yet evidence suggested something extraordinary was happening behind closed doors in Shanghai. Overhead imagery showed fabrication facilities being dismantled and rebuilt entirely. Inside, unfamiliar machines appeared, systems unlike anything used in traditional Western fabs. As details slowly surfaced, a clearer picture formed. SMIC had not tried to copy existing technology. Instead, it chose to bypass it. Rather than chasing extreme ultraviolet lithography, the company pursued a different strategy built on highly complex multi-patterning combined with advanced AI computation. Artificial intelligence compensated where physics imposed limits. Software replaced brute force hardware. Algorithms guided atomic level precision in ways previously thought impractical. This was an imitation. It was a fundamentally different approach. The transformation went far beyond how circuits were printed. Working closely with domestic universities and research institutions, SMIC helped create an entirely local ecosystem of materials. New photoresists, etching chemicals, deposition compounds, and specialty gases, once sourced almost exclusively from suppliers in the US, Japan, and Europe, were now being developed and produced within China. What once flowed in from abroad was suddenly coming from nearby laboratories. The speed of this shift raised eyebrows. The explanation pointed toward people rather than machines. A quiet but massive relocation of expertise had taken place. Recruitment channels across Asia and beyond attracted seasoned engineers and researchers from companies like TSMC, Samsung, and major American firms. This wasn't a gradual trickle of talent. It was an organized transition. Entire teams arrived with deep, practical knowledge built over decades. Some described it as a brain drain. Others saw it as a calculated realignment. Either way, SMIC was no longer just building chips. It was gathering the human capital needed to redefine how chips are made. Alongside these developments, whispers grew louder about an internal initiative known informally as Project Phoenix. Never officially confirmed, it was rumored to operate separately from standard production. Speculation tied it to advanced optimization methods, defense-oriented research, and chip architectures designed to function under extreme conditions such as radiation exposure. There were even suggestions of links to aerospace programs, with technologies intended not only for space exploration, but potentially for future military environments. At the same time, signs pointed to something even larger. China appeared to have quietly assembled a fully independent semiconductor supply chain. From mining and refining rare earth elements, to growing silicon crystals, synthesizing chemicals, and producing ultra-high purity gases, every step had been recreated domestically. In an industry where the absence of a single material can halt production entirely, this level of vertical integration was unprecedented. Hidden within patent filings was another disruptive idea, adaptive manufacturing nodes. Instead of rigid process standards like fixed nanometer generations, this system allowed production lines to dynamically adjust based on the needs of each chip. High-performance processors, energy-efficient sensors, and AI accelerators could all be produced using the same equipment without costly downtime or reconfiguration. 
This approach blurred the boundary between design and fabrication. SMIC pushed design technology co-optimization to an extreme, allowing AI-based design tools to interact directly with real manufacturing data. Each production cycle refined the next. The process learned from itself. Better chips improved the process, and improved processes enabled even better chips. Leaked performance data added fuel to the fire. Unofficial benchmarks suggested that SMIC's two nanometer class chips could rival, or in some cases exceed, comparable offerings from industry leaders. Reports pointed to lower power consumption, similar performance levels, and surprisingly strong manufacturing yields. If accurate, this represented more than progress. It signaled a fundamental shift in the balance of power. An unsettling thought now hangs over the global industry. What if the long-standing dominance of the West was never as unbreakable as it seemed? What if control over specific tools was a weaker safeguard than assumed? SMIC may not have simply caught up. It may have altered the very structure of the global semiconductor order. What began as a discussion about microchips has evolved into something much larger. At its core, this is a story about independence, about a country that was once excluded from the highest tier of technological power, deciding to chart its own path and refusing to play by rules written by others. It reflects a moment where long-standing assumptions no longer hold, where control mechanisms lose their effectiveness, and where a competitor once deliberately constrained starts operating according to a completely different strategic logic. If SMIC can achieve this level of capability without relying on ASML, LAM Research, or Tokyo Electron, the real issue is no longer how far they've come, but what happens if they move beyond those who tried to limit them. What if they expand more rapidly, operate more efficiently, and advance more aggressively than the industry ever expected? For decades, global technological progress was shaped by one central advantage, control over advanced semiconductor manufacturing tools. That control determined who could innovate and who could not. Today, that influence is weakening. SMIC hasn't just produced a new chip. It has sent a message that dependence is no longer part of its future. If that message reflects reality, then the global semiconductor contest has crossed into unfamiliar territory. The long-standing balance has broken down. This isn't about narrowing the gap anymore. China may have shifted onto an entirely separate development curve. What we're seeing is not convergence, but divergence, the rise of a parallel technological system that follows its own rules. Across the industry, companies once viewed as untouchable, names that defined the cutting edge, are facing a new uncertainty. Inside their labs and boardrooms, teams are urgently analyzing developments coming out of China, focusing not just on technical achievements, but on the pace and scalability behind them. The effects extend far beyond manufacturing floors. Chip architects, device makers, cloud infrastructure providers, and system builders are being forced to reconsider assumptions that shaped decades of planning. If comparable or superior chips can be produced with dramatically lower capital requirements, the financial logic underpinning the entire sector starts to unravel. Strategies that once felt secure now look fragile, and leaders are quietly asking what other breakthroughs might already be in motion. From a technical standpoint, the shift is profound. SMIC's reported 2 nanometer process is not a simple refinement of existing methods. It represents a reimagining of fabrication itself. By combining conventional lithography with electron beam techniques and atomic scale deposition, the company is operating in a domain that many researchers previously considered impractical for large scale production. Advanced materials capable of self organization at the molecular level enable structures smaller than the wavelength of light, pushing manufacturing precision down to the scale of individual atoms. This level of control surpasses what has historically been possible in volume manufacturing. The innovation doesn't stop there. Reports suggest SMIC's fabrication facilities are driven by specialized AI systems that monitor and adjust millions of parameters in real time, fine-tuning exposure, alignment, and material placement to maintain consistency and minimize defects. Even one of the most persistent challenges in chip scaling, quantum tunneling, has been reframed. Instead of treating it as a limitation, SMIC's engineering approach appears to exploit quantum effects, resulting in transistors that are smaller, faster, and more energy efficient than previous generations. The timeline makes the situation even more striking. Industry observers believe SMIC could enter large-scale production of 2 nanometer chips by late 2025, potentially ahead of established leaders. 
At the same time, work on adaptive processes beyond that node is reportedly already underway. This is not a delayed response or a catch-up sprint. It is a reset of the industry's expected progression. The implications reach every corner of the global economy. Cloud service providers gain new options to optimize performance and cost. Automakers developing autonomous platforms may gain earlier access to powerful computing hardware. Defense and aerospace programs that require secure and reliable components could discover alternative supply chains less vulnerable to geopolitical disruption. There are even indications that these manufacturing techniques could significantly reduce energy consumption, offering a major advantage as sustainability pressures intensify. What's unfolding is a structural shift. The belief that technological leadership belongs permanently to a small circle of established players is eroding. The framework that governed innovation for decades is losing relevance, and industries from consumer electronics to national security are already feeling the strain. This moment does not signal an ending. It marks the start of a new phase. SMIC's progress points to a future where speed, adaptability, and long-term vision outweigh legacy advantages. Organizations that fail to rethink their position risk being left behind in an environment where old rules no longer apply. For anyone connected to technology, investors, engineers, policymakers, or consumers, the signal is unmistakable. The foundation beneath modern infrastructure is shifting faster than most recognize. The question is no longer whether disruption is coming, but whether we are prepared for it. This is not speculation or exaggeration. Transformation is already underway. In an era where constant change defines success, awareness and readiness are no longer optional. The future isn't something on the horizon, it's already taking shape around us.